Oh, hey, I'm Mark. I am a professional artist, an art teacher, a future bald person. And from what I can see right here, it's time to level up your art skills. You're fine though, I was just about to start. Today, I'll be teaching you how to color your black and white drawings or paintings using the best and only legal way. If you've been using any other method, you've been doing it wrong and you must be stopped. I use the technique that I'm about to show you for about 99% of the work that I do, and you should too. Let me show you real quick. All right, so if you've been coloring your digital drawings or paintings, you've probably seen, you know, a few dozen ways to go about it. And while technically they can all produce good results, there's one way in particular that I teach my own students because it's the superior way to go about it, especially if your experience is a little bit more limited. But as I said, this is my own method that I use for nearly all all my work so it works in all cases and it works well there's only one requirement for this to work you need a drawing that has shading that's it the rest is ridiculously easy as long as you have that no shading no coloring you're lucky though by some inexplicable coincidence i happen to have a video showing how to shade your drawings right here in the top right corner of the screen and of course down in the description below so if you haven't cleared that first hurdle go ahead go watch the video and i'll be here waiting for you so got your drawing shaded now yes no doesn't matter to me i have mine nearly ready here just a little bit more work what we'll be using here are photoshop's gradient maps in this tutorial if you don't know what that is keep watching it'll change your life and if you're familiar with that tool well also keep watching because I bet you're not using it the right way. But before I get started, I can already hear Karen bashing her keyboard and trying to comment that she prefers to start with colors instead of grayscale. Why grayscale to color in the first place? Well, for professionals, the main advantage is speed. As you're about to see, coloring shaded drawings or, or paintings this way is ridiculously fast. That's obviously important. Time is money. Okay, cool. But what about everybody else? Well, while the speed advantage is definitely still a bonus, a nice bonus, the biggest advantage for this technique has to do with just how much better it'll make your art look. Not only that, but it's much harder to fail or mess it up compared to, uh, well, to the other coloring techniques. The idea here being that you should focus on as few skills as possible at any given time. Kind of like going to the gym. You can do a full body workout every single time, but the best way to put on size is to break down your workouts in parts tackling different muscle groups for each of your workout days. When you work this way, it allows you to have a much better focus on each particular step. In my case, at this point, I have a shaded drawing, so I don't have to worry about perspective, anatomy, gesture, design, storytelling, and every other art fundamentals that were required to get me to this point. That's done. So now I can focus all my attention to the colors and the colors only nothing else to distract me. All right, let's do this. Oh, and by the way, the only downside to this technique for now at least is that it's mostly just possible in Photoshop and other painting software with gradient map tools until others get their shit together and implement gradient maps as well. I'm looking at you, Procreate. So now I have my drawing done and uh, well, my drawing, my black and white, my grayscale drawing done. And uh, the next step will be to color the bejesus out of this. But real quick, if you've never actually used gradient maps at all, let's take three seconds to look at how it works and how to use it. So to access the gradient maps in the first place, what you would normally do is create a selection for what you want the gradient map to be applied onto. So let's say I select you know, this part here and I go down and select gradient map. Now, at this point, once you've clicked this, you should have a little, uh, well, gradient map layer here and a mask next to it. And of course, the mask here indicates our selection. So what we had selected, if you don't have a selection, it'll basically just apply the gradient map onto the whole thing, everything that's underneath it. So if we want to use multiple gradient maps in this case, you know, for this character to color the different areas, we really want to make sure to use selections. But yeah, now that I have a gradient map, I can just double click it and click on that little thing here and then it brings up the gradient map editor and of course here you're going to have a bunch of different ones those are custom ones that i've created over um you know over the years you can head over to my qbrush store link down below and i have a small set of gradient maps that uh, you can download for free in case that helps because yeah the default one really really bad but yeah anyway so now you can click any of these and uh, well that is the magic of gradient maps so basically 
assigning different colors here to the values that I have. So if I select a black and white, you know, it's not gonna be a whole lot different, mostly the same. But if you apply colors, well, we can see here what all these little boxes mean. Basically, those are the colors that uh, we select for this area of the values. So in this case, you know, everything that's black in my illustration here. Well, instead of being black now with the gradient map on top, it will be this color here. So kind of like a dark red. Then the color next to it in this area of the drawing. And I can move it, of course. You can slide these around. Well, those kind of darker grays are going to be transformed into this particular color instead. And then the same applies to all of these. Now I have five of them in my case here. I found that five is the best number of, uh, of colors that you can have in a gradient, or I should say the best balance. Let's say you only have three, and I delete this one here. Well, you can see now the gradient is not the same, right? I don't control as much of it. I let basically Photoshop solve it for me. And uh, usually that tends to get a little bit muddy. It doesn't look that great. But when you add your custom gradient and basically tweak the richness of the colors in between here, and of course you can always have different colors, you can do whatever you want. You're free. This little feature here that allows us to assign any color to any value range is insanely powerful. So let's say we have one gradient now and I want to have another one for this section of the drawing. I'm gonna go ahead again, do the same thing, gradient map, select a different gradient map. Maybe uh, this one's not so bad, but I don't need this color here. I can get rid of that. And you can play with it. It's super simple, you know, to create, to pop new colors, just click. Uh, when you have one selected, you can delete it. Depending on your shading, you know, you'll probably have to slide these around to affect different uh, different ranges of the values. Everybody's shading style is different. So the only thing that you should really keep in mind when using gradient map to color is that your drawing, your, uh, your black and white image should use as much of the values as possible. It just makes it easy. So use the blacks, use the whites, use everything in between. If not, you know, if everything is too dark, for example, you might have to push all these sliders to the left to see any impact at all, or vice versa if your drawing is too bright. Anyway, so this is the logic. So now I have two beautiful, uh, well, a beautiful drawing with two gradient maps applied. And uh, let's say I'm done, but then I changed my mind. And I really, really want to change those colors here. Well, even though it's colored, I can always go back, click the gradient and change it to something else. So that's the beauty of gradient maps. Super flexible, really quick, as you can see. And it's, I don't want to say completely, but almost foolproof. So back onto my drawing here, what do I have? Well, the kind of things that you need first are, would be just flat colors. So those are going to act as my selections, right? So if I want to select just the, the skin, for example, I'll just click on that, I think that's blue. And now I have this selected. What I can do is go ahead and create a gradient map with that selection on. So once you have your black and white image, your grayscale image, what you should do, create a flat layer and then, you know, break up that layer into different sections for the different, uh, the different regions of your illustration. What I recommend is to treat those regions as materials. So for example, in here, everything blue is going to be skin. Everything green here is going to be the armor and you get the idea. So now I have my skin. Obviously it doesn't look like skin at all. So no problem. I can go in here and apply a different gradient map. That looks pretty good. Let's go with that. No need to change it. Of course, those greater maps, you know, it's kind of like your, your brushes. You'll create some over time. And as you have more to choose from, the process is going to speed up even more. So now I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the jacket here and create a new greater map. So I want to make sure to go on top of everything here. And my process, you know, it's quite rare that one is going to fit perfectly right away so usually i'll just grab one that's kind of close to what i want and uh, yeah tweak the colors move the sliders around and as you can see here as i'm choosing the different colors right always 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 thinking about color theory so making sure that i have a nice a nice gradient in my gradient so different colors not just the same color with more black or more white added instead of my dominant color here is going to be a little bit cooler than what I'll do for my shadows. For my darker colors, I'll go a little bit warmer, so the opposite. So if you don't have any of those gradients, um, what I recommend is to start with only three. So start with kind of like the, the mid color, the mid tones, and then add color for your shadows, color for your highlights. And then if you need any more, then you can just pop some in here because uh, right now it's just it's just blue, kind of boring. So I want to add a little bit, uh, a little bit more saturation in here, maybe, or maybe like a slightly different blue, like a warmer, not a warmer, but a uh, a cooler blue with a little bit more purple added. All right, that looks pretty good. And well, if you like it, call it whatever and save your gradient. So this is kind of how you uh, yeah, improve your collection. And I'm speeding through the rest, but it's basically the same thing. So rinse, repeat until you're pretty much done with all the different regions of your character or your 
you know, this works with environments too, whatever. And yeah, this isn't, you know, like a color theory tutorial, but very similar to what I was doing with uh, my gradients themselves, making sure that I have a warm versus cool balance in my colors. Well, I'll try to do exactly the same thing with the design overall. In this case, I'm getting kind of this, uh, this, this triads color harmony, my blues, my reds, and my yellows. So very by the book because it works. And we're done. <laughs> so that's pretty much the process. Now, of course, you can uh, sure notice there's a couple of things in here that are not quite done. You know, like the eyes, it's not white, the eyebrows, little buttons everywhere. Smaller details I tend to not do using gradient maps because it's kind of get diminishing returns. Still takes a little bit of time to set all of this up. If anything, it just makes things a bit more confusing. So what I tend to do is leave gradient maps for all the bigger chunks of the drawing, all the different types of materials, and then all the smaller details. You can kind of go back in here. What I like to do is set a layer to hard light. Then you can add the final kind of subtleties once your gradients are done. Now, in a lot of cases, that probably be enough but i mean there's no there's no lighting in here it's just shading and colors obviously it's not done in my book and if you want to know what i would do to this or kind of what my entire process is you know to color a line art including the steps in here you can find a link to a to my full coloring tutorial once again in the top right corner of the screen here but this is how the magic happens now granted the quality of the underlying drawing plays a big part in here. You know, if your black and white image or, or painting is not shaded well, then your grain's not gonna look good. Once again, I'm reinforcing the fact that you should focus on different steps and tackle different checkpoints before you get to this stage here. So if your shading isn't good, of course the gradient map's not gonna not gonna look good. In that case, you would go back, fix your shading, and then once it looks good, then you can move on to gradients and colors. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure you agree by now. You know, all it took is these, what, seven different gradients to color my entire image, plus a one layer to, you know, for corrections and fixes and, and additional details. But for a setup, for a work setup, it doesn't get much simpler than that. Flats, grayscale, gradient maps, fixes on top, and there you go, you have a colored drawing. By the way, this drawing here is not finished. Like I said, you know, I'm probably going to add a, a lighting pass on top of this. Anyways, I'll be posting the full time lapse a little bit later including, you know, all the all the, the actual shading stages that I haven't included in this video. So keep an eye out for that a little bit later in a couple of days. But yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So if it helped, you know what to do, especially if you're not subscribed. But a like, a comment goes a long way in helping spread the videos, which is the only thing that I really want, because then I can help out more people like you. If you use any of the resources that I have here, either try to follow one of the tutorials, use my brushes for one of your paintings, doesn't matter. I always really, really love it when you share it with me on social media, because whenever I have time, I always try my best to reshare or retweet as many of you guys as possible. And at the same time, getting a couple more eyeballs on your work. Why not? But yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I can't believe I haven't yet been caught up.